Hello, this is Jo from Maths Tutor Me. Today we're going to start equations. If you haven't done equations before, or if you've just started equations at school and you're not really sure what's going on, then this is the lesson for you to start with. Today we're just going to be talking about what equations are all about, what are we really doing, and to do that we need to talk about inverse operations. So that's what my lesson today is called, inverse operations. Now, on this piece of paper here, I have an example of an equation that we're going to learn to solve in a few lessons time. An equation is like a balancing scale. The equal sign is like the balance in the middle, and we have to keep things balanced on either side of the equation. If I add things to this side of the equation, I have to also add the same thing to this side, otherwise it won't be balanced. If I take things away from one side, I have to take it away from the other side, otherwise my equation won't be balanced. So, when I have an equation here, to solve it, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the x value by itself. So I want to do things to my equation to get the x by itself. I want to move some numbers away from it so that the only thing left on this side of the equation would be the x. Okay, and to do that we need to do inverse operations. So, before we solve any equations, we're not going to actually solve any equations today, we're just going to practice learning what inverse operations are. So here is um, my little note here for you to remember, when solving equations we need to reverse the steps to get the pronumeral by itself. To do this we need to do inverse operations. So here is an x and you will have x's in lots of equations that you come across. We need to go what are we doing to this x to get to this second box? Well this is quite straightforward, all I am doing is adding 3. If I add 3 to the x, I will get to this second box. Alright, well that's pretty straightforward, but often we have a few steps to get through. Here I have an x. To get to the next box, what do I need to do? Well, I've got an x minus 1, so to get from the first box to the second box, I have subtracted 1. Okay, and then to get from this box to this box, x minus 1, I have the x minus 1 here on the top, and then I've got a fraction coming in here, and a 5 on the bottom. Fractions are another way of saying divide. What we are doing there is we are dividing the x minus 1, we're dividing it by 5. And that is what has happened to build up that um, expression there. So, that's building up from x, but when we have an equation, we actually want to start with something a little bit more complicated, and we want to work it down so that we have the letter by itself. So here we have something that you might find a bit more similar to what you might find on, on one side of an equation. h over 4 minus 7, okay, and we have to try and step by step make this so I just have the h by itself. So this is where we are going to get the inverse. Okay, now h is what I would start with, that has been divided by 4, and then I need to subtract 7. Now, I want to go in reverse, so the 7 was the last thing to go on there, so I want to get rid of that 7 first, so that I would just have h over 4. So to get from there to there, what I have done is I have added the 7 on. I add that back on, I've inversed it to get h over 4. Okay, then to get rid of the 4 here on the bottom, I would need to times by 4 and that would give me just the h. Okay, so it's always the opposite to try and move a number to get rid of a number in an equation. So 
when I had a sub subtracting 7 here, I want to add the 7 and that will get rid of it so that now I just have the h over 4. Now that h is a divide by 4, so the opposite of that is 2 times by 4. And I get to here. All right, and the h is by itself, which is what we're trying to do. All right, hopefully that's making a little bit of sense. Let's try again for this question here. I want to slowly, step by step, I have three numbers here with the M. I want to move each of them away one at a time as I go along this diagram here to finally get the M by itself. So let's talk through what has happened to M. M plus 6 is in brackets. That is times by the 2. And then all of that is divided by the 5. So we need to do that in reverse, in the inverse. So reverse of dividing by 5 is that I want to times by 5. And that will give me, that will get rid of this 5 on the bottom. That will give me the M bracket, 2 bracket, sorry, M plus 6, close bracket. Okay, so it was M plus 6 times 2. All right, so the 2 was now the last thing. So now I need to move, get rid of that 2. So that is times with that bracket. So the inverse would be to divide by 2. That gets rid of the 2 so that I will have an m plus 6. Finally, I just have the 6 left to move away. And the inverse of adding 6 would be to subtract 6, leaving me with just the m. So I've done inverse operations all the way through there so that M is now finally by itself. Okay, one final question down here. Draw an arrow diagram to show how to get the pronumeral by itself. So we have to draw one of these diagrams here all on our own. So let's start with our first box. Our first box is what we're starting with. 3K minus 1 over 2. Okay, if I start with k, k is multiplied by 3, then the 1 is subtracted, and then all of that is divided by 2. So in reverse, it's going to have to be the 2, the 1, and then the 3 as I go backwards through my steps. So I'm going to need 3 boxes for the 3 numbers. So 1, two, three boxes. Okay, the first one to go, or I should draw my little arrow, shouldn't I? As we go through. The first one to go was the last thing to happen to the two, the last thing to happen, which is the two. So that is a divide by two, so I need to times by two. And that will give me 3k minus 1. Right, now the 1 needs to go. So the opposite of subtracting 1 is to add 1, which will get rid of this one, and I will just be left with 3k. Now I want to get rid of the 3, so to get rid of the 3 I need to, that's times. The opposite is to divide by 3. Ta divide by 3 will give me k. Okay, hopefully that is making sense. I know it's a little bit tricky when you first start doing equations to wrap your, heads, your head around doing these inverse operations. Here is a few questions, just like the ones that we just did, um, to, for you to practice to see if you can remember what we've done. So turn the video off. Have a try of these questions and then restart the video to go through the answers with me. So this first question, we're going forward through these boxes here and we want to write down what has happened to the x along the way. We started with x, all right, now we have an x plus 3, so we have added 3 here. Okay, to get to the next box, here's our x plus 3, and now we have multiplied that because that's what that means, but it's right at the front there. We are multiplying that with the 7. Okay, that's going forwards to build up an expression.
but we want to be going backwards. We want to do the inverse operations in this next question. So I have y minus 1, that is all multiplied by 4, and then divided by 3. So there are three numbers there, the 4, the 1, and the 3. So there's three things to move away, one at a time. Now I need to do them in the opposite order to how they occurred. So y minus 1, that was the first thing, so it's going to be the last one to be moved away. That's multiplied by 4, so the 4 is going to be the second box, and divided by 3. So the 3 is going to be the first thing to, to get rid of. The opposite of dividing by 3 is 2 times by 3. That will give me 4 bracket y minus 1. Now as I said, the 4 is going to be the second one. That 4 is times with this bracket. So the opposite, the inverse, is to divide by the 4, which will give me the y minus 1. I don't need the brackets anymore because there's no longer anything out the front to multiply with, so I don't need the brackets. Last of all, I need to get rid of this 1 here. The opposite of subtracting 1 is to add 1. Okay, and so that will give you just y by itself, and that's what we want. Okay, question three, we want to draw our own arrow diagram to show how to get the pronumeral by itself. So here we have w over 8 plus 2. So that's going to be the first box. w over 8 plus 2. Now there is two numbers here with the w, there's an 8 and a 2. So there's going to be two steps or two boxes in order to get the w by itself. One box, two box, two boxes. Draw the arrows in between. Okay, so let's talk through what has happened. w is divided by 8, then I add 2. So in reverse, I have to move the 2 first, the 2, and then the 8 will be the second one. So the opposite of adding 2 is to subtract 2. Okay, that will get rid of the 2, giving me the w over 8. Okay, now that is a w divided by 8, so I will need to do the opposite, which is to times by 8 to give me the w by itself. Okay, so that's the end of my lesson on inverse operations. This is, we're not actually solving any equations yet, like I said, but we're just getting into the habit of thinking in opposites to move things away. So join me next lesson and we'll start actually solving some equations with these. And um, yeah, then it really gets fun. All right, I'll see you later. Bye.